see our screen? Oh, we haven't shared it. Can you see our screen yet? Let us know. Keep us, keep us in the loop. Yes, I think you should you should be seeing us now. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking your time on this beautiful, beautiful Saturday um, to come learn how to ace your admissions and scholarship interviews with us at Getting and to do it with ease, do it very naturally. Um, so the whole point of this session is to help you figure out, you know, what you need to do to ensure that once you're in front of the person who's going to make a decision about your scholarship or about your admission, you blow them, you blow them away and they have no choice but to, you know, basically um, um, give you what you want. And who are we? We're Getting Education Consulting. Uh, we're a social enterprise that over the past couple of years have been helping Africans get into top schools in the world, like Harvard, we have it, Cambridge, we've been there, Oxford, normal, Stanford, normal, MIT, normal, Cornell, you know. Uh, <laughs> the list is endless. <laughs> it's endless. So you are in the best place if you're trying to either jackpa or just, um, you know, upgrade yourself, position yourself with a better job this is what we do we equip you with the skills that you need so today we're talking about interviews right and today we're going to have, have a conversation please mute yourself as you come in so that we're just you know enjoying this ambiance over here we have a special guest you know i'm actually going to give a little bit of a backstory this is actually getting very first client Right. So I'm going to introduce myself just a little bit. My name is Miriam. I'm the founder of Getting Education Consulting. I'm a lawyer. I'm a social entrepreneur. And uh, I did my master's at Cambridge. I'm doing a PhD at the University of Toronto. And education basically has been my passport to uh, uh, what I would call a wonderful life. And it can be yours as well. And that's why we're here. And Ola Esho is actually Getting's very first client before Getting was even called Getting. And um, and you can see all our accolades here. Oh, boy, it's plenty, you know? <laughs> She's a senior consultant, Deloitte in Austin, Texas. Um, best and brightest MBA candidate, Quetz and Quant, which is such a big deal. Best consulting student, Cornell MBA. One very interesting fact about Allow Me is that she actually has two master's degrees an MSc in food science and an MBA. So she's very well equipped to give you all the tips from all the interview tips from the different research-based program or an MBA program. Ola, do you want to add to that? Well, thank you for that fantastic introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, Miriam has always been an inspiration to me and someone that I look up to. If you're trying to get ginger energy, hey. if you're trying to be about something, you've actually come <laughs> to the right place. <laughs> So I'm excited to be here. Um, I love what I do. I help clients solve some of their toughest challenges when it comes to their strategy, customers, how do they engage with their customers. And one of the things that I'm passionate about, aside from food, I love good food, <laughs> is education. Um, I think you can unlock a lot of opportunities, Absolutely. open a lot of doors. And I, I like when people take it very seriously. So welcome, you've come to the right place. We are very serious, even though we're very fun. I know you enjoyed the music we played earlier. <laughs> um, but yes, let's get into it. Absolutely. So again, before we go in, if you have anyone that you think should be here, please forward them the details. Don't be, don't be selfish, you know, yeah. forward them the details. And finally, give yourself a pat on the back for being here this Saturday. Right, so before we go in, we need to have a plan because without a plan, you know, there's no purpose. So what are we going to talk about today? First is why interview? Why is this even necessary? Like, haven't you submitted an SOP, your CV? What is the essence of having an interview? And then we have three main buckets that we're going to analyze. What you do before your interview, what you do during your interview, and what you do after the interview. And the other pocket of this presentation is basically talking about how to ask for funding, and then we'll be able to take your questions, all right? So that's, we're gonna spend just a, a little bit above an hour, um, nothing more so that you can go, you know, groove on Saturday. So, I mean, do you want to take a lead on this? Why exactly? Because you've done a couple of interviews right, for right. MBA and your MSc. Why do schools have to do these interviews? So, interviews are very important, right? I, I'm, you know, I'm actually curious about some of your ideas. So, please drop some, you know, messages in the chat to let us know why you think they do interviews. Um, but I think the verse, the first purpose of interviews is to test for fit. What does that mean? The organization or the, the school, they want to know if 
culturally you are fit for them. Yeah. What they mean is that will you fit in with the student body? Mm. Will you be able to engage people in your classroom? The other thing is how, what's your academic fit? So can you contribute? Can you elevate the status of the organization? Would you be able to, um, you know, engage with your classmates and students and other students and faculty members in a way that will move the institution's academic integrity forward. Mm -hmm. So when you're having um, an interview, it's really a conversation that you should be curious, you should be learning about them and they are trying to learn about you. So we've listed some of the things here you can read. I'm not gonna read um, word for word because this is gonna be, um, conversational. Yes, it's conversational. Yeah. So let us know in the chat what you think um, an interview is for. Yeah. Um, another important thing that I want you to know is you've written this um, personal statement, you know, SOPs and all that stuff, but it's good to put a face and a voice to the paper. So they're trying to figure out, are your goals truly your goals? Um, what areas might you need extra support? So this interview is really, I think that's what it's for. Do you have yeah. any other ideas? I think that's a very important point in that you've written the paper. Can you, can you back up the talk? And that's why, or, 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 your, or your words, and that's why when you're writing your statement of purpose, it's very easy to, um, you know, yes, it's a bank says to know your ambitions and plans. Absolutely. It's very easy to write anything. But when you're writing, make sure you, you, you have it at the back of your mind that I may need to defend this, right? So this interview is also to see that the person that you said you are on paper is who you are. And also bear in mind, low key, an interview is a little bit more like a competition. You understand? And I think if you have that mindset that this is a competition, you will approach it with all the ginger that you have. They're not just interviewing you because they want to see your face. They are trying to decide whether it's for a scholarship or for admission, if it's a school, maybe scholarship or admission, if it's an organization, a funding body, they're trying to decide whether they should give you the money or someone else. So look, don't look at an interview just as an interview. It's an opportunity for them to get to know you, but it's also a competition. And that's how you would, you know, and that's that that mindset will give you the level of prepare, will encourage you to prepare, you know, the way we are going to show you how to do today. All right. So that's why we have interviews. Now, why, you know, before the interview, there's a lot of work that actually goes on. It's like you have a one hour interview, but the number of hours that goes into the preparation for that one hour interview is a lot, right? And I'm, we're just gonna, you know, explain to you what the core things are you need to do before the interview. And the first thing actually is to work on your mindset. And I'm gonna be very, let, let me give you a bit of a background mm -hmm. to ourselves. So I did my undergraduate degree in Nigeria. Ola did hers in the US. We have very different perspectives and very different approaches to conversations and interviews and things like that. Before I started my PhD and my master's, I think I was a little bit timid during interviews because I was just like, hey, this big professor from Cambridge or this big professor from University of Toronto wants to talk to me. And I would just be nervous. I'm not someone who is naturally nervous, right? But something about those interviews or just having to talk to these big professors would make me nervous, right? So the first thing you need to know is to do is build your confidence and realize that you are an asset. If you were not an asset, if they didn't, if they weren't attracted to you on paper, you would not be called for an interview. That's the first thing. You'd have been rejected from the get-go. And I'm just going to tie this with the point about imposter syndrome, especially for those of us who, grew, who studied in developing countries. Sometimes you just feel like, am I good enough? You know, let me let you know that the fact that you're being called to attend that interview means that you are. And that's something that you have to tell yourself consistently, right? And if you're ever in doubt as to whether you're good enough, use evidence, look at your resume, right? What is it that you have done? What is it that attracted them in the first place? And make that um, the fulcrum upon which you demolish any thoughts of inadequacies, all right? Yeah. I think those are, that's, you know, that's the foundational piece of, of it. Um, going into it, realizing that you have a lot to offer already. Yeah. And your job at the interview is going to be to demonstrate that to them. So, and you can't do that if you don't have confidence. So, so all of the things that build your confidence, maybe think about all the, the things that you've gone through in the past and the things that you've overcome. Yeah. As you make a list of evidence for yourself when, you, when you're getting like imposter syndrome or everything, Read it to yourself, like mm, I did. I, I passed my jam, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> like, you know, all the other things that you've done, um, even as you, what, you know, if, even if they're little, that needs to remind your, your, you know, your psyche. Oh, God. Get it, get it. Yeah, that I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. Please, if you don't mind muting yourself. <laughs> yeah, that would be better. So in the comments, I want you to chat and type to us, I am good enough. Yeah, look, I'm a ginger queen. I have to psych you up. I am good enough. That's the first thing. I am good enough. I remember one of the very first interviews I, I ever did. I was good enough because they called me already. But when I got there, I showed them that I was not good enough. Do you understand? Mm. Because I didn't believe in myself and I didn't carry myself in such a way that showed that I deserve to be amongst them. Right. This is an extremely important point. So you are good enough. If, even if you're hearing vo voices in your head that tell you that you're not good enough, they cannot hear those voices. Mm -hmm. So your job is to pretend. You know that video of Rihanna that says, how do you feel when you're not confident? She's like, well, you're just gonna, <laughs> just gonna fake it till I make it. <laughs> and that's exactly what you're going to do. Even if you, they, they're asking you a question that you don't know the answer to, just calm down. They don't know you don't know the answer. So don't let your face ever betray that you are not confident. I may be shaking. You don't even know right now if I'm shaking during this presentation, but you can never tell on my face. So let that be something that you start to practice. No matter how you feel, let your face, put, put on that poker face. You understand? Sharagiri, that's what we say in my language in Yoruba, yeah. Yoruba, which means just stand strong and don't betray that you are not confident. I am good enough. Fantastic. I um, love seeing all the comments. You are good Yes, enough. you deserve to be among them. <laughs> you do. You do. You are good enough. Fantastic. So another point before the interview, so you've worked on your mindset. Yeah. What's the next practical step? you have to take a look at your resume, your stories that you've written, and you have to commit them to memory and think about all of the things that you've, you know, you've talked about. How can I present a cohesive front? Mm -hmm. If somebody asked you a question about like some line on your resume, can you answer with a story that is, you know, that is robust enough and it's good mm -hmm. enough? And I'll let Miriam talk to this <laughs> point of um, this pro tip. Everybody better take this very seriously. Yeah. A story for each sentence. Yeah. Rule. Absolutely. So th this is one of the ways that I've been able to, I would say, overcome any kind of interviews that I've faced. And it's called a story for each sentence. Now, what does that mean? Your resume, I, when, when I take, when I'm preparing for an interview, I have my resume. One page, two pages. When I'm done preparing for my interview, my resume is about seven pages long because those are my notes. What have I done? I've looked at every single line that I've put in my resume and I have an experience or a story to back it up. So I'm a lawyer. If I say that I, I, I advised on a $300 million deal um, for a gas plant, I have a story about that particular experience that I've put there, whether it's how I collaborated, you understand, with a team of people, um, whether there was a challenge with that, um, that project that I overcome, I have something to say because I don't know which part of my resume, I don't know which part of my story they might be attracted to. So I want to be able to, no matter where they point to, right, be able to have a story and use, we're going to use the star, um, we're going to use the star method. I'm going to explain that, which you most likely already know. I'm going to use a story to back it up. All right. So obviously what this does is you, you, it doesn't mean that you must tell all your stories. No, but you have them at your fingertips. So even if the question does not come in the way that you are expecting it, because those stories are very fresh to you, you're able to, 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 to lean on that experience and explain something, uh, explain uh, in a way that answers the question. Another point I'm going to emphasize as well is that the interview is a conversation. Now, again, we're coming from different contexts. <laughs> As a Nigerian, we have a very respectful culture. And it's, it is, if you're talking to someone that's older than you, you're likely to be saying, yes, sir. Yes, ma. Yes, thank you so much, sir. I'm very grateful, sir. And have very deferential, a very deferential approach to your conversation. I'm not saying you should be rude, but that's actually not likely the cultural context of any school abroad that you are trying to get into or any organization. Instead, no matter your age, they see you as a peer and you need to start seeing yourself as a peer. I always use myself as an example. When I started my PhD, I used to be a little bit scared to speak to my supervisor. Now I tell my supervisor, no, I don't agree. This is how I'm going to do it. When I do it like this, then you're going to do this and then we're going to do it together. You understand what I'm saying? But I've had to build my confidence to that place. So I want you to be very aware of the cultural 
differences. Don't go to a meeting and I'm saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. They might find this annoying, you know, or they might, it might seem a little mocking, right? Instead, they want to vibe with you as a colleague, right? I don't know if you want to Yeah, let me add to that. I think you've been selected because they found something in your ability to challenge the norms, to do some research, to be able to convey your opinions, your true yes. opinions. And I know that like, like Miriam emphasizes, I didn't really go to undergrad in Nigeria. I did one year at Bell's University. And I know that from my experience, you couldn't really challenge what your professor was saying. You need to throw that, if you're trying to be in a Western school, throw you need that to throw away. that out of, you have to be able to say, well, I've seen what you've said, what you've said, your, the arguments that you've made, but here is how my thoughts is different. Yeah. And that starts from the interview. Like they can push back on something that you've written. Let's say you said, um, um, instead of analyzing the chemicals using like, uh, I don't know, a spectrometer, for example, I would use another instrument. And they're like, why would you use another instrument? It's, it's so convenient. You have to be able to say, these are the other reasons why this, my selected instrument is good. Yes, I understand where you're coming from, but this is another way to do it. Yeah. Like your rap will say, there are multiple ways to the market. Yes. Like we don't all have to take the same path and you mm -hmm. have to be able to back up your points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And look at the comment from Ogotchuku. She says, the respect culture. I flunked my first interview because of respect culture could barely hold a conversation. It, it might sound like, why are you emphasizing this thing? I, I, I don't, if you've had any experience with, this respect thing holding you back from talking. Can you let, let us know in the comments so that we all know that this is a real thing, right? The, the very first interview that I had, I was just so in awe of the lawyers I was talking to that immediately I entered the room, my bag fell open and poured all over the place because I was just like, hey, these big, big lawyers. But now, even if you like be Dangote, whoever you are, be the richest man in the, in the, in the world, I'm going to have a conversation to you like we're mates. Mm -hmm. But that's something you have to work on, you know, day by day. And how do you work on that? Start by holding conversations with people that you admire. They may not even know that that's what you are doing, right? But see how you're holding conversations. Look at, start to research people so that you actually have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Find out what is it that makes me shake. You understand? What is it that makes me you know, not feel that confident to hold a conversation. And once you identify those, whatever those are, you then need to tackle it. But you only get better by practice. You need to practice with your friends. You need to practice with people who are like, you know, in a little bit older than you so that you can have a conversation with them without that differential, yes sir, yes ma thing, okay? So what else do we need to do? Research, I mean, mm. you wanna to speak to this? Yes. So congratulations, you've gotten the you've gotten the invitation um, for you know to get admitted to get a scholarship. Well, your work is not done. This is the point where you have to buckle down and do a ton of research. So what do we mean by research? Why are you trying to do research? You need to understand beyond the research that you've done for the school to write your essays and all of that, you need to understand why am I a good fit for this organization? Why is this organization a good fit for me? And how can I spin that story? How would you do the research? You know, LinkedIn, thank God for social media, yeah. Twitter, Google Scholar. So if, for example, you want to work with, if your PI is going to be Miriam Momodu, right? You first of all need to Google her. That's table stakes. Figure out what she's interested in, what kind of papers has she written, what kind of conferences has she attended, what gives her, you know, what, what is she known for? Um, once you have all of that information, then you need to reach out to current students. Ask them, how is, you know, how have you enjoyed your time here? What are the things that have surprised you about being a student on campus? What do you enjoy the most? Um, you know, things that would, will engage them and will give you some insight tips. Like, let me give you a, a very specific example. If you're applying to Cornell University um, for the MBA program, one of the telltale signs that you have not done your research enough is if you're calling Cornell University's MBA program, Cornell University's MBA program. <laughs> okay, so what do you call it? You have to call it Johnson because nobody within the community calls it the MBA, the Cornell University, we call it Johnson. So you, when you're talking to a number of students, you're gonna get the lingo. Mm -hmm. And that tells me that, oh, you've done research beyond what's on the internet. 
Yeah. You've talked to some of us, you've figured out, okay, what organizations am I a part of, or is Miriam a part of, why she joined those organizations. That will really help you to build that cohesive story because if you know that there's 10 different organizations, but the one that you're interested in is Johnson Africa Business because we work with African businesses and we're interested in business on the continent, then you can speak more clearly yeah. to that. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, the research element, I don't even know how to emphasize it as much. Like it's so important because when you're even checking LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Scholar, Conference Agenda, YouTube, YouTube. YouTube. Why YouTube? You need to, if you know who is going to interview you, if you've been told the person, you know, is going to interview you, try and see if they have a video on YouTube. Why? You get to see their face before the interview or, and you get to hear their voice. You get to get a sense of their demeanor way before the interview, which will already put you at ease. It's like someone you've met before, right? Then news articles as well. Have they been in the news recently? So don't let your research be surface level. What's on the website? This professor does so, 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 and so. When you go to their LinkedIn, you're looking at so many things. You're looking at the posts that they interact with. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're not looking at, oh, what's their profile? Go to their activity. Who are they interacting with? Because that's top of mind. Do you understand? And if you are able to, you know, somehow steer the conversation to something that they already have a sense of familiarity with, it's we, people are drawn towards what they're familiar with. Your job as an interviewee is to make your interviewer comfortable. Yep. Do you know that your interviewers are also nervous? Do you know? Mm -hmm. They're also nervous because they don't know what they're going to meet on the other side of the table. So your job, when you understand that, your job is to make them comfortable. Your job is to make it an easy conversation for them. If an interviewer is asking you a question, say, yes, I do. I, I did take government in, in school and I believe that the Russian situation is not good at all. <laughs> like, what do you want them to do with that information? You understand? But if you're able to engage mm -hmm. and then the conversation is organic, even they are comfortable. In fact, they might even throw their script out of the window. And I think those are the best interviews where you make your interviewer so comfortable that they throw away what they plan to ask you and you guys just vibe i remember one interview that i had um five minutes into it i don't even remember what we what we were vibing on maybe i'd seen that they were interested in let's say for example brene brown i'm sort of obsessed with her and we started talking about brene brown's like ted talk books and stuff like that do you know that maybe they asked me one serious question yeah. Everything else was just, oh, yes. <laughs> like, she's at University of Houston, she's this, she's in Texas, like the whole conversation, because we, we've built rapport. So I want, I want, to, I want to make that um, point of when you're doing research, you're not only looking for the technical things that they've done, you want to look for their interests. Yes. Like if they're interacting with Melinda Gates Foundation, you want to know why, or like you want to be able to speak to the things that they're interacting with. Absolutely. And Ogochuku, I like this. Please get it. Let us use this quote somewhere along <laughs> on Twitter. It says, kill your interviewers with comfort. Absolutely. Let them be comfortable. They forget to their, their mission. They will, they will throw it away. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, the, the truth of the matter is we give opportunities to people that we like. That's the fact. So if I'm comfortable with you, if I feel like you're my old friend, not like too familiar, okay, there's a balance. I don't yes. want to... Um, give you the wrong thing there's a balance but if i feel like i'm comfortable with you i can be stuck for for consultants the 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 yardstick is can i be stuck in the airport with you mm. because if we have flight delays will i feel like talking to you in the airport yeah. when everything is so stressful so think about that and bring try to infuse that comfort into the conversation mm -hmm. i think um one of the things that is a pro tip here as yeah. well do you want to speak to it um no you can't um, a couple things, okay. Set up Google Alerts. Do you know what Google Alerts are? If you let let us know if you know what Google Alerts are. Um, you can use comments. the reaction button on the on the Zoom as well. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Some of you know. No, there's just some technical. Oh, okay. 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 Um, some of you know what it is, but if you don't know. Google is the first place to start. <laughs> I, I love Google because there's no stupid question on Google. Um, the second thing is when you're doing your research, you want to keep it in an organized fashion. Yeah. So if it's a spreadsheet, I prefer spreadsheets because it's easy. But if it's one note or um, a, Google, um, a Google doc, you can say, okay, 
I learned this about Miriam, bullet points. It doesn't have to be like pros, just quick things that you can remember and refer to right before the interview yeah. to kind of jog your memory. Absolutely. So um, I, I'll speak to the Google Alerts again. So Google Alerts, it's a way that you can keep track of information. So it's a system, very smart system that Google has made to, um, so let's say my name is Mira Mamodu. I can set up Google Alerts for my name so that every time I'm in the news, I get an alert that says Mira Mamodu was mentioned in, you know, Forbes, you know, uh, 2000 and, you know, May match to an edition of Forbes, blah, 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 blah. So that way you are up to date. You can set up Google Alerts for anything, for people, for certain keywords. So if you're into research, for me now, I have Google Alerts on regional integration in Africa. So if you, the words regional integration, Africa, come up in one article, I get it every morning right? And that way I'm on top of it. So Google Alerts, you can set a Google Alerts for the organization that is giving you funding. So when you go into the interview, you can even say, oh, I just read in the news, they will know that you've already set it up. I just read in the news that this and this and this is happening in your organization. Okay? I couldn't find too much about it online because it's super new. Do you mind speaking to, to you know, sharing more insights about it? Um, Olga Chuka says, what if you don't know your interviewers before the interview, but you know the organization? Any tips on how to make them comfortable? This is part of what we're talking about. If you have Google Alerts set up for that organization, you can speak to the organization and find out, you know, what exactly is the latest thing that's happening. Look at the social media. What are they tweeting about? Okay. For scholars, looking at Google Scholar is very good because you can see their articles. If you look at conference agenda, what are the information you're getting from conference agenda? One, you can see where they've traveled to. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? If you've also traveled to Spain and you can see that the conference was in Spain, you will somehow with style, make sure you talk about Spain in that interview. It must it's compulsory. Come up. It must <laughs> it's come compulsory. Up. So don't, when I was saying do this research, don't think about this in a very linear way. It's very dynamic, right? It's, you're looking for any little piece of information that can give you a connection to the person that you're speaking to. And the final point before we move to the next slide, is what is the organization's ethos and what is your own story? Now, this is extremely important. The first thing, the organization's ethos, what do I mean? It means what does that organization, whether it's a school or a funding body, what do they stand for? For instance, Harvard, they are known for wanting to produce presidents, senators. So if, you did, if for you to get into Harvard, they must be like, you know what? This person can be a future president of Nigeria. I am a, I'm a proud Harvard rejectee. Why? And I know why, because I've gone on to help people get into Harvard. Because even though I had a fantastic, oh, fantastic grades, I had a first class, I, you know, everything was, was neat and clean and beautiful. I was not ambitious enough for Harvard. When I wrote my Harvard statement of purpose, I said, um, when I wrote my Harvard statement, so Emmanuel, all these tips that we're giving you are what you would use to ace your Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. And we can speak in more detail at the end if you have very specific questions. So, you know, um, uh, Harvard, I wasn't ambitious enough for Harvard. So for Harvard, I wrote, oh, I want to be, be a lecturer or whatever. I should have said I wanted to be the president or I wanted to be a senator or I wanted to do something very revolutionary. But I just said something very basic. The same thing for the Commonwealth, right? If you are, uh, you've been selected for a Commonwealth scholarship, they are big on people who have a plan to give back. Mm -hmm. You must have a plan to give back. I always say that I think the, the investment that the Commonwealth shared made in my life has been repaid over and over and over and over again because of the number of lives that have affected. So Emmanuel, as you're going into that, you know, that interview, you need to make it clear that from this scholarship, you understand, I'm going to do X, I'm going to do Y, and this is going to be the result. And this is the impact it's going to have on X, Y, Z number of people. You understand? And it must be clear. It should not just be a highfalutin dream. You must, you must show how, you know, Connecting, um, going to that particular university, maybe connecting to that particular network will amplify the work that you're already doing. And you need to make it clear that you are the kind of alumni that they are going to be proud of in the next few years. That's what they're looking for. So you need to understand what is this organization's ethos. Then the other part is what is your own story? Do you want to speak to this, your story? <laughs> sure. Um, so you, you've, we understand what, what does the organization stand for? Um, what is your own story? Where are you coming from? Yeah. It's not just like, 
how can I say it? It's not just, I went to school in UI, got a 4.5 GPA. I don't know what the GPA skill is, so please excuse me. <laughs> yeah. um, I got this GPA. I, I am a... Um, I'm very so close. I am a first of three children. That's not what they're asking. Yeah. What are you really about when... Um, like a lot of you might not have read this book, but it's sort of like a, what they call purpose-driven life. Mm-hmm. What's the bigger picture of your life and how have things up until now helped you to maybe realize that bigger dream of your life, the bigger purpose, and how does that fit into or relate to what the organization is trying to do? Yeah. So if you want to change the world, you want to change Nigeria, you want to whatever, okay, and you're looking at Harvard, for example, you have to see how that story meshes. Where is the, it doesn't have to ma- like match perfectly, but there might be nuances here and there where you can relate to the organization and the organization can relate to you. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of your story, how do you go about, what structure? Mm-hmm. Now, as w- you know, Ola has said, don't just say, oh, I went to the University of Ibadan. I, I, I studied botany. And now I'm interested in seeing how plants can cure COVID-19. No. That's not your story. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. Your story is who are you? Mm-hmm. You understand? So how does that... So when I talk about myself, I say things like, oh, I will start with... I, I went to the University of Ibadan. I'll say, oh, well, I've studied... I, I'm, I'm a lawyer and I've studied law in three continents. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, is, this makes me... X, Y, Z. There's a reason, you know, what has that done to my, to my journey, right? So when you're thinking about your story, don't just, you know, make it a chronology of what you've, the schools that you've been. I may never ever mention that I went to one particular university. I can say, you know, I've studied law in three continents. So what that has done, you know, over in my career is to give me a very multi-jurisdictional approach to the practice of law. And I love my job right? I love meeting clients. I love closing deals. I say that I close deals in heels, you know, you know, that's how you, you have to sell yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. I love closing deals. Um, one of the things that really stands out about me is my ability to be extremely organized. And I think that's why I've excelled. I'm selling myself. Oh, and I think that's why I've excelled, you know, in everything that I've done from, you know, having a first class in university to being cons- winning some of the, you know, most prestigious scholarships available for academics. So that, that same skill is something I'm looking to bring to your you know, to your project, mm-hmm. right? And you always, when you're telling your story, you always have to tie it back at the end to how you're bringing those things to them, right? How you're going to bring it to them, how you're going to use that to either create a positive impact or, you know, um, you know, use it to your advantage during the program. So please know your story. Your story is more than um, your institutions. Anybody else who went to your institutions can have that story. It's more unique. So see how I've taken the fact that I've studied in the UK, in Canada, and in in, in Nigeria. I've brought that together to make me a, trans, a a transnational lawyer who has insight into what it means to do businesses in business in developing countries, you know, to manage investors in developed countries and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? So think about your story, mm-hmm. right? If you are doing education, you can say, well, what, so they say, they say, tell me about yourself. Don't just say, my name is Miriam, M- Miriam, and I love education. No, you can say, well, uh, to get started, I, I got into education because my brother of, you know, my brother refused to speak until he was six years old. And that got me really curious about, you know, what is it that makes some children develop faster than the others? And that's been the driving force of my life. I, you know, let's say your accolades, right? You know, I earned a master, a, a master's or whatever in special education, you know, with a first class degree. I went on to work at so so and so where I did this right? You know, now I'm applying for this program uh, because honestly, I just think it's a great fit um, between my experiences working with special education uh, needs children below the age of six and the research that you do on low-income communities and blah, 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 blah. And that's why I'm here. That's your story. Yeah. All right. Are we making sense? I'm not seeing the comments are not... (laughs) They're not, you know, it's not, uh, I'm not enjoying the comment section. Let's know if this is making sense to you, if you you are getting the point about your story. Your story is not the institutions you've gone to. Yeah. 
And I think to, to add to that point, um, because this is important, this is very probably going to be your, the first question they're going to ask you is tell me about yourself. Yeah. So that question, you cannot over prepare for it. Yeah. Um, for me, this question is particularly difficult because I've done a number of different things in my life. So I have, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I have um, worked as a, in physical therapy. I have worked as a food scientist. Yeah. I have been in the lab as a scientist. I have gotten my MBA and I work with, <laughs> and I work with clients on customer and strategy problems. So sometimes when, when, when I'm, I'm about to tell the story, it's kind of challenging because how do you bring those pieces together to make a cohesive thing? One of the things that I talk about is when I was working with, in physical therapy, I was working on a patient by patient basis. So my impact was, okay, Miriam has back pain. How can I help Miriam get better? Yeah. And solving on, that's like a micro level to me. So now I want to bring solving problems, solving mm. challenges mm. on a macro scale with your business. Like your business is probably multinational and your, your problems are big. And I want to bring the same problem solving skills, um, the same love for people, the same kind of impact that I've had on a micro scale in the, in, 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 in a physical therapy clinic to the business organization. Mm-hmm. So the thing in my life is that I love different variety. I love challenging problems mm-hmm. and I want to help people be better. Yeah. People get better. Yeah. So whether it's get better academically, whether it's get better physically, whether it gets more profits from, you know, the relationship, because when you, when you improve relationships to customers, you're going to get, you're going to see much like Money, returns. Yeah. Yes. So that's my story. Help people get better have a variety of problems that I'm solving. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to point out, there's a, there's a comment here about what if I'm just graduate, fresh from school? You know, I don't, you, 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 don't you guys get it? It doesn't matter what stage you are in your career. You need to put on a hat of, can I, let me take an objective view at the things that I have done. Mm. If it is that you led a research project, or if you were just a part of a research project, you should did research projects in school, or you were part of some organizations on, on campus, those are things to talk about. They can see your resume. They know you don't have work experience. Yes, they invited you for the interview. Yep. Don't you understand? You missed the first point, which is that the fact that you are there means you already have enough. Mm-hmm. It's now your duty to amplify it. They knew you were fresh out of school before they invited you for that interview. That means there was something that caught their attention. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what I'm going to say is that use this same approach, mm-hmm. right? To look at the things that you've already done, whether it's it, 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 the, it, the impact does not necessarily have to be on a national scale or, you know, huge businesses. It can be just within your community, right? But you do need to have um, um, those uh, experiences. So for instance, I can say, if you tell me about yourself, if I was just fresh out of school, mm-hmm. right? I would say something like, um, well, since I was since since I was quite young, and again, uh, try to make yourself personable, right? By the way, she already did a lot. She was we went to high school together, and she was our head girl. Mm. And yeah, you know my secrets. <laughs> I, I have to. And she fought for us to have like social life on campus. Like she fought for like what about the parties? You know, <laughs> you know. So that's an experience that is not necessarily academic. Yeah. But it still shows you take initiative. Yeah. You're bold. You have a vision for what you want your student body to have. Like the experiences you want. So don't. My point is, don't discount any experiences, Absolutely. even if you're in undergrad. Yeah. Try to find a way to package that story to fit the situation that you are in. Let's give, let me give an example of, let's say I was fresh out of school. Here's what I would say, right? I would say, if they say, tell me about, tell me about yourself, I'll be like, well, you know, from a young age, I decided I was going to be a lawyer, um, perhaps because my mom is one. Um, but I, 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 at the University of Ibadan, where I, I did my law degree, um, I, I excelled in school, but I also did a lot. You know, I was part of a, a lot more. I, I was part of the, you know, whatever, whatever organization of, 
I didn't, I mean, okay, shows was I even in school. Plenty. I was, <laughs> you know, I was a part of the Law Student Society. And that, I think, was one of the most enriching experiences for me. It helps me, you know, interact with lawyers like you um, when we're going out to, you know, access funding, do this, do that. It helped me to do this, it helped me to do that. So you need to look at what you've already done as a student. And you can talk about the courses. It depends on what you're interviewing for. So if it's for a master's, um, position, right? You can then emphasize that, oh, I was part of the intellectual property, um, uh, the intellectual property club. And one of the things that I, I loved most about my undergraduate experience was organizing IP, um, you know, whatever, IP, con IP conferences or organizing, um, you know, um, you know, the, an essay writing competition, which was the first that was ever done, blah, 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 blah. You know, now that I'm out of school, I'm very excited about what my career is going to 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 um to to uh to be you which is why I'm I'm applying for this um, master's in intellectual property. I believe I have a very unique perspective coming from Nigeria, where intellectual property is being treated in a very different way from you know, the West. My goal for this program is really to learn from you and also share with you how it different intellectual property is. Bear in mind, I'm just forming this from my head. I didn't do anything with intellectual property. You know, <laughs> how different intellectual property is, you know, um, you know, in, in, in Africa compared or in Nigeria compared to the West, but marry those experiences and basically change the way artists musicians blah, blah 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 protect their whatever whatever in nigeria that's it it's really no more than that but you try and put a little bit of personality into it is what i'm saying mm -hmm. go and look at if you do the one line your resume uh, a story for each line exercise in your resume you will have something to say i promise you Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. There's a lot we still have to talk about. <laughs> okay. So I think a lot of this um, we've already touched on. Yeah. The, so this is now we've talked about before you get into the room. Now, today is the day of the interview, the, the day. Mm -hmm. All of your preparation has to come to, to bear. You have to mm -hmm. show you have to show off. Yeah. Let me use that word very candidly. You are here to demonstrate how excellent yeah. you are. No humility. Like, please be nice. Be, I mean, be whatever. But <laughs> don't, don't, if you understand yourself, you'll be hearing my voice in your dream saying, why did I not? Why did I do that? You understand? I will haunt you. So don't undersell yourself. Okay. Please, this is a day where humility is not really needed. It's not needed. Yeah. It's a competition, remember? Yes. Yeah. So when you, you know, we, we've written here a few points and I want you guys to look at it very closely. So the first one is selling yourself starts when you arrive or join the meeting. Yeah. Please, 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 please. This is not the day to be late. All the villagers that are doing anybody, please. No, 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 no. At least arrive five minutes beforehand. Mm -hmm. You don't have to turn on, if it's going to be on Zoom, for example, you don't have to turn on your video. You don't have to unmute. But just be there because it would help you settle in, close all the mental tabs of, oh, have I washed my dishes or have I, you know, and allow you to really be present for the interview. Yeah. Second point here is you have to dress appropriately. Yeah. Please business formal, um, unless otherwise stated. Like maybe you've talked to one of the students or a couple of the students and they're like, oh, we're really casual here. You can come. Even when they say you, we're really casual, please don't even believe I that. don't even <laughs> I'm not ever going to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd rather you be overdressed yeah. than be underdressed. Let me give you guys a tip. Me, I'm known for being the quick extra. When you're going for an interview, right? Whether it's a job interview, a school interview, what are the colors of the organization? I wear the colors. If the color of the organization is like, if it's not like maybe like gray, gray, a whole rainbow or like a very shocking color, if it's like a blue or a green or whatever, I would wear my 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 tie would be you know if I'm a guy my tie would be green or I would put on like a top that has a bit of a hue of that school I want them to know that I am I'm with you hundred percent mm -hmm. like yep. I remember I had an interview with Forte Oil when I just moved back to Nigeria I wore green my black jacket my green inner shirt I could as well already be your employee right I'm not sure so <laughs> <laughs> I know this thing sounds small you understand what I'm saying but it's the kind of thing that will set you apart, especially if, you know, it's kind of obvious, yeah. right? So that's just a very small tip. It's just something that I do 
personally, okay? No, I think it's important because in the American, at least let me speak for American culture. Uh, in the American culture, there's something called a school spirit, yeah? So they can say go, I don't know, in, at Cornell with Big Red. So you have, maybe you can just show that you know that by maybe having like a, lapel, red, yeah, a red, it doesn't have to be a like- A red brush, you know, something like that, okay? So I think we can move on to the next point. And we've done a good job of actually talking about what is your story. And it's not a mistake that this is coming back up again because yeah. we want you guys, we can't overemphasize it. Um, what is your story? Tell, tell me about yourself. It's often going to be the first question. I, I want to add here that feel free to add something unique about yes, yourself. something fun. So sometimes when I introduce myself, I will say food is my love language. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> And then I will talk about how I have, you know, passion for food, but also what we're talking about for yes, the day. Absolutely. So feel free to kind of test the. Mm, mm. <laughs> oh my God! Sorry, guys. Uh, if you're not fun, you can't have fun here with us. If you know there's someone that should be here, I beg, tell them to come. You know that's such a very important point, and this is how I do it because I'm not about doing the perspire to inspire the desire we tell you practically now what i do when i introduce myself is i talk about you know oh I've, i have you know experience from multiple jurisdictions i'm able to bring that in you know and i, I have i can even say that i run a social enterprise which gives me a business minded approach to any problem that i'm solving and i'll say and when i'm not doing my law stuff Honestly, I'm just looking at dogs on Instagram. I love dogs. Um, if you have a dog in the, in, and I meet your dog, in 10 minutes, we're going to be best friends. That's what I do for fun. I love dogs. I, you know, blah, 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 blah. My favorite breed is a golden retriever. Uh, and even though I don't have a dog now that I just moved to Canada, my, the first thing I'm going to do once I get this job and you pay me for it, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't go that far. Well, you know, that kind of thing is just like, you're just kind of, you, and usually try and pick something that everybody can relate to so food mm -hmm. is one you understand so another thing i say is or um you know i i cook really well mm -hmm. if ever the opportunity arises i'll make you jollof rice <laughs> which is the nigerian i know this might sound so strange to you guys because in nigeria in africa most times we don't interview like this mm -hmm. but it's in this is how i had to relearn how to do interviews you understand so the last interview that i did I actually talked about jollof rice mm -hmm. You understand? So, and we're going to talk about taking humor too far. Yes, we, and that's the next point. And maybe I should just segue into that. So I try to just mention, you know, something that is unique, but I want you guys to read the room. If you, if you go into the room and it's very stiff, don't go like pa, 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 laughing, 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 chi, 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 chi. no, you need to read the room. And using your tell me about yourself question to insert a little bit of humor will help you to gauge the appropriate level of laughs that you can elicit and you can give so if you say something like oh well i absolutely love dogs and the person is like this calm down do you understand but if you say i absolutely love dogs and you know my favorite breed is a golden retriever i'm hoping to get one in the next few months and the person is like oh really goldens oh they're gonna shed hair all over the place like yes i know that's what i heard the conversation has started so listen, read the room. And that's why we say humor may work. Some people are just bland. They're just boring. They're just unhappy. Somebody has annoyed them in the morning and it's not your fault. They didn't have coffee that morning and they're not okay. So it's not your fault. You understand? But try and test it. If you see that the vibes are vibing, please key into it. If the vibes are not vibing, step down. You understand? So don't start with, I, I love jollof rice. So when you say, tell me about yourself, no, you talk about the technical side. And then what I usually do is uh, when I'm not, you know, busy closing deals, I will even sell myself inside again. Mm -hmm. When I'm not busy closing deals or when I'm not busy writing research papers, I'm on Instagram looking at cute pictures of cute dogs because I completely adore dogs, mm -hmm. right? So it's not the first thing. You're not there for vibes and jokes, right? But you need to show that you have some personality, nice. yep. okay? Um, now, another thing, I, I think, let me, let me take this one because it's very, um, um, it's very important for those of us who are coming from developing countries. I want to tell you that during your interview, don't apologize and don't emphasize what is lacking. What do I mean? Now, if you, they ask you a question, maybe have you used, you said spectrometer, I don't mm. even know what that is. <laughs> have you used a spectrometer before? 
don't say, ah, I'm so sorry. Uh, well, I've not actually had the opportunity to use a spectrometer. You see, in my school, there's only one spectrometer. And that spectrometer, they lock it inside the cupboard. Only when the professor is around is when we're able to use it. No. Don't if you've never seen a spectrometer, you understand? And that's important to your work. The fact that you're emphasizing your, your, your inability to use it, you understand, makes it even worse. And don't apologize that you were born or you grew up in a system that did not give you the adequate facilities that you needed. It's not your fault. So here's what you would do if they say, have you used the spectrometer? You say, oh, um, typically um, with the opportunity to use the spectrometer typically arises when one, two, three in my, in the lab that I was in. However, unfortunately we had only one, uh, but whenever it was out, I was always there, you know, to watch and see how it was used. In addition, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I've read a lot on how to use a spectrometer. And quite frankly, that's why I'm really attracted to your lab because I'm aware that there are lots of all these resources available. And I'm a very fast learner. I can assure you that psh, within a, you know, with, with the first one, with, with the right direction, one or two times, I'll pick it up and I'll be able to do whatever, whatever, whatever experiment that you need to do. You don't need to overly apologize. You understand? Don't you say, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I've not had the opportunity to do this. I'm so sorry. No, don't apologize. Do you understand? I mean it seriously. It's something that we do. I say, I, I, even though I've not had the opportunity to, don't apologize for it. And if there's something that you should know that you don't know, the way you, what you can do is to deflect and change it into what you do know. So mm -hmm. you can say, oh, I've, I've not been able to use a spectrometer, although I'm confident that if I have the opportunity, you know, to once I get to your lab, I will be able to pick up and use it quite quickly. I learn very quickly from my peers um, and I'm able to, you know, I have, a, I have a talent of getting, you know, people to help me, uh, show me where, you know, what to do. And then I, I quickly pick it up from there. However, I've had the opportunity to use a andrometer. I don't know what that is, right? <laughs> I've had the opportunity to use, um, so I've had the opportunity to use an andrometer and you know, that is similar to a spectrometer or is even more complicated than a spectrometer or it's a precursor to using a spectrometer. You understand what I'm trying to say? So you can deflect. So that's going to your point, Kemi. Um, if you don't, if you, if you, if you've never used a spectrometer, deflect to what you have used mm -hmm. or, you know, show that you have the capacity to use it. You understand that show the kind of, show that you know what is used for. Mm -hmm and um, the kind of research that you've done um, around that so that they know that, well, this person just didn't have the opportunity to access it, but if they do, they'll be able to, um, to, to use it. Okay. Oh, what you could say, it's the framing yes. for me. Everything is about framing. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So we talk about small talk as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> then you said lies, <laughs> white lies. It's not, it's really not. If, if someone is asking you about something that you've never done before, yeah. but you know a little bit about what, you will just emphasize on the things that you know. Yeah. And say, I am excited to learn about it from my peers, from you, whatever, whatever. And I, I'm, I'm excited to also give back because at some point when you're in a research program, you're going to be training undergraduate students. You're going to be training other people that are going to join the lab and you, you will give back. So because you haven't had access to it now, doesn't mean that that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. So don't think about it as white lies. Think about it as framing, framing, branding. There's an image that you're trying to project. And that's what we're here for. I would also prepare, you know, for small talk, mm -hmm. right? So we've been kind of talking about small talk. You know, you love dogs, you love jello, you like to cook, you know, something called jello fries, blah, 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 blah. You know, you small talk is something that you can low key prepare for. So if you know somebody is in Toronto and you're having an interview with them, about now, you know, sometimes you could just say, oh, that you, you can, you, you saw that the weather is getting, finally getting better in Toronto. And that's one of the things that, you know, you're really seeing how you're going to adapt to the Canadian winter. Right. Don't say, ah, how we like cope with the winter. Don't say that too. But just like say, you know, you're so excited that you, in fact, I just, I wish I could go offline for this. Sometimes you want them to even explain some things to you with small talk. So say if, for instance, you've never seen snow. Oh my God. That's actually a fantastic thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. You understand? Using small talk. You say, oh, well, I'm looking forward to coming to Canada. You know, Nigeria is really temperate. It's humid. We don't have snow. So I'm actually looking forward to like uh, having my first white Christmas when building I come. Building a snowman. <laughs> building, and building a snowman when I, when, you know, when hopefully I join your lab. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, for instance, somebody said, 
you, um, the lead interviewer for my upcoming, upcoming scholarship interview is Ghanaian. Is it okay to bring up the jollof rice beef? Yeah. Absolutely. But just just be very temperate. See how passionate they are about yeah. their jollof. I would, I would say for the jollof, well, that one can go either way. It can go either way, yeah. So basically <laughs> what, you, what you want to demonstrate is I, I love my jollof, but I respect your jollof exactly. as well. It's never, oh, it's better. Just be like, oh, you know, I appreciate Ghana jollof for the palm oil that you use, the kind of rice that you use. Like, don't, it's not a serious thing. It's Small not, talk is not about no, arguments. It's not, it's not. <laughs> In fact, what I would say is that, and to be honest, I love Nigerian jollof, but I actually think Ghana jollof is pretty solid. So what I would say is that, you know, well, that's oh, that I that thank you know, thank goodness we're not we're if we're in person, perhaps we would we would have to try both Nigerian and Ghanaian jollof, and then you can say something like, to be honest, just don't my Nigerians wasn't here, but I really think Ghana jollof is very solid. Let them be happy. Yes, mm-hmm. even if you don't really like Ghana jollof. <laughs> okay, so do you want to go to the types of interview and then questions? Yes, so. Interviews, has been, it, it's been changing, right? Um, this landscape for interviews and there's something called like the asynchronous interview, a synchronous interview. You could be one-on-one, it could be two-on-one, it could be three, like it could be a group setting. So ha- how do you handle such a situation, right? Um, asynchronous um, interviews means that- mm-hmm. Okay, we skip background and lighting. That's very important. Okay, we'll, we'll go back to it. Okay. Um, I can briefly touch on it. Yeah. So basically, let's show them the difference between. This. Yes. Yes. What's the difference between this and this? Can anybody tell us what's the difference? What is the difference between this, and that, and that? Especially in this age of Zoom, what's the difference between those two? Anybody between this and this? No difference? Any difference? Let me even get up here. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting in the comments. Um, then you can talk about lighting. <laughs> so, you know, when we talked about um, joining, you didn't... Re- okay, yes. God's, God's will got it. The eye level. So basically, when you're um, trying to be on an interview, a virtual interview, you want the camera to be at as close to eye level as possible. Yeah. Because when you're trying to make eye contact, and I'll just do this for demonstration, if I'm looking straight at the camera, it looks like I'm looking at you. Yeah. And so you want it to be at that level. You don't want them to be seeing up your nose or like all over, like, oh, like this. What, yeah. what, what is that? Um, and then you want to make sure that you're in a wet lit environment. So maybe you have to have a ring light or you have to have flashlight or, you know, something that will help you brighten up the space. Yeah. Um, for background, you can use virtual backgrounds or you can blur. There's a like blur feature that you can use that you can have some privacy and it can look a little bit more polished. Yeah. A plain background is fine. If it, you have a background that's a little bit busy, let it be busy for a purpose. So if you have like a bookshelf, let that be like, you know, maybe if you, you have a family, you want to show that off. You have your degrees, you want to show that off. It depends. A plain background is always fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're going to put stuff in the background, let it be with a purpose. And then just one additional point is that you can actually hide your self-view. Even as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at myself, I should be looking at the camera, right? So if you're having it, but whenever I have interviews, I switch off. If you uh, go on Zoom, Zoom, there's a way you can say hide self-view. Touch. If you click those three buttons, you can hide self-view. That way you're not seeing yourself and you're just actually looking at the camera mm-hmm. and looking at the person. So we can actually hide self view so that yeah. you can look at the camera. Yeah, I think we should do that. <laughs> and then the other thing is, if your interviewer, for example, has a background that is interesting, because some people like to show off their artistic talent in their background, make a comment about it. Yeah. Ask, oh, what's you know what's that in your background? Why have you put it there? That kind of thing. That can also be another way to small talk. To engage in small talk. But know how you, you, you present it. You can just, this is, do you have any questions? We're going to go to that part. You can ask a technical question, whatever. And then you can just say, you know, this isn't really technical, but I was just wondering, like, you have such a gorgeous painting in your background. Mm-hmm. Is that something you made or is, does it have like a special significance? And then the person goes, oh, my daughter made the painting. My da, 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 da. Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh, that person that asked me about the painting in their mind and they've given you scholarship because you asked about that. Exactly. Okay. So just 
briefly asynchronous is when they've asked you so you're not live essentially um they've asked you to maybe answer a few questions record yourself and send it to them so they might they'll send you a few questions ahead of time and then they're asking you to record and submit so that's asynchronous synchronous means that you're <laughs> i'm so sorry i have to laugh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, I let Nigeria not shame you sometimes. But yeah. anyway, I'm sorry that happened to you. Ha <laughs> Someone said Nepa took lights during that interview. That's small talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Enemies were really working. She was surprised. Let us know in the comments how you how you spun how that. You it, yeah. So please have a backup. Maybe you should go on generator for your interviews mm -hmm. instead of um, you know relying on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please let us know how this panned out. <laughs> the more reason why they should give you the scholarship. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the next point here is, oh, I wanted to make a good point about a group interview. Mm. So sometimes I don't know how common this is and I don't know the variety of the places that you guys are applying to, but sometimes they can say for a group of five people to solve a problem. Um, so you might decide, based on the group, you might decide, oh, let me do this part, you do that part, you do that part. Let me tell you, you have one job. Your job is to make everybody look good. This is not the time to say, I want to outshine you. No, you want to demonstrate that I'm about something. I have a perspective on a, different, a number of different things, but also how can I help? How can I make sure that this team shines the yeah. best? Yeah. I've had a few group interviews like that, and the people that were trying to be domineering, the people that were trying to outshine other people did not get the offers. Mm -hmm. Because that is, it's displaying to them, okay, how can I work this with this person on a team? Is she going to take all the glory? Mm -hmm. It's like, what kind of person is this person? And do I want to work with them? Mm -hmm. So be very careful when it comes to group um, interviews in making sure that you shine but you also help people shine. And you want them to know that you're helping them shine. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say they've um i don't know calculated something and you see that there's a decimal point that is missing you're gonna you're not gonna say oh you're missing a decimal point you'll be like oh do you mind if we look at this again i think there might be another way to solve this oh i think this this is missing let's put it there like yeah. so you, you're not making them feel bad about what they like their um, negligence but you're encouraging and fostering a sense of collaboration mm -hmm. and making them feel good about themselves mm -hmm. as well. And, and even if you don't face like a group interview, because it's unlikely that you're going to face a group interview in this context of, um, of uh, maybe admissions, scholarships possibly, depending on how, you know, they want to structure it. But um, you, to, to piggyback on uh, Ola's point, with the group, the way, one of the ways you can shine is offer to help in mm -hmm. that you can say, you know what, I'm going to take notes. This note taking is the killer because if you take notes, guess what? Everybody has finished talking or whatever. When it's time to present, they will ask you to present. So mm -hmm. low key, when you're taking notes, you're actually trying to set yourself up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, we have mm -hmm. to let this the roundabout way. Yes. You're trying to set yourself up to be the presenter. You must make sure you write, you must write the notes anyway that note. nobody else can read it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But if I were to write notes, my writing is bad anyway. So nobody else is going to be able to read it except me. But so, but don't, don't be so obvious. <laughs> no, but that brings up a, a good point because when you're starting to solve a problem and you say, I'm happy to take notes, you're showing yourself as taking initiative, being helpful to the team. And so it just, it, it works. It's, you know, it's a win-win. Yeah. So, um, I think the next point here is use your research in a non-obvious way. Yeah. What do we mean by this? Um, so what I mean by use your research in a non-obvious way is that if you were doing the research and you found out that, let's say on Twitter, the, um, the professor has a golden retriever, don't say, prof, <laughs> I see that you like dogs. Me too, I like dogs. Please don't do that. I know that a lot of us, you know, we're very, very obvious. We're very clear. We're very plain, right? What, what's, um, Okay, I, I think we need to explain the different types of interviews again. Mm -hmm. um, what you would do instead is do what we said before about introducing yourself and then saying, oh, I love dogs. And then let them offer that information that you already found online. You understand? So if you're having... Um, 
if you're having you know a conversation we'll have a space for questions so that we just don't get distracted as 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 much um so if there's if you found out that you know they went to spain or they presented on this particular topic make sure you say oh i'm very interested in use that topic that you saw that they presented on Mm -hmm. That way, they're very, but don't say, oh, I saw that on the 7th of March, you went to Spain and presented on XYZ. Don't no, do that. So no. you have to kind of be very subtle about it. Now, in interview format, the asynchronous and the synchronous, you know, of, of the group, the, the, the basically say that there's some interviews that are live where you're talking to someone like this. And there's some that are pre-recorded. So they basically set you up to, to join like a, you know, an online whatever, and then the questions will come at you and then you need to respond. So it's still the same things, but you need to make sure that when the, you know, there's nobody on the other side of the interview, you have to kind of make your personality a little bit big. You understand? Because you're not, you're not getting a response. It's almost easy to just be like, I did this, I did that. Just, you know, maintain that. It's a, it's a weird thing because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be talking to just yourself, but maintain that brightness, that vibrancy, you know, still dropping your jokes once in a while, smile, you know, um, even though you're not getting feedback. Then group interviews is basically like maybe five people while interviewing for the same position, you know, five of you, they put you together to work on maybe like a case study or, or, or something. And they, you, you guys are supposed to work as a team. So what I was saying about taking notes is that if they say, okay, we're trying to analyze how this bottle can be, you know, how to rebrand this bottle, for example. So you will say, you know what? I'm happy to take the notes based on what we're discussing so that we can present. So they say, oh, change this to red. You're writing it down. The presentation of the bottle, the nutritional facts, you know, the, the logo, and you're putting the notes down. So don't worry, I'm happy to, you know, put all the notes together so that we have something coherent to, to speak on sure. when it's time to, to present. That's one way. Another way is to actually drop and give ideas. Another way is to refine people's ideas. Another way is to say things like, oh, that's a very fantastic, because they're watching you actually mm -hmm. as you're talking, but like, oh, oh, talk about that's a very fantastic point. I actually think we can also add this to that. So acknowledge other people who are giving good points. You know, if you disagree, you can say, oh, that's really, that's a really great point. But do you think we can also consider it from this perspective because give your reasons, all right? So let's, I hope that clarifies it a little bit more. And I think that's also ad address this point about giving 30 seconds to provide a one minute answer. Yeah, okay. Um, so please, I need to know in the comments if you're getting value for this, right? So answering the actual questions, I know most of you must know about the STAR technique, so we won't spend too much time. But we'll, do you want to speak to that? Yes, so basically, when they ask you a question, it's easy for you to even ramble. It's easy for us, all of us to ramble. Yeah. So the STAR method is a way to keep your structure in place, to help the person follow the logic of your question of the answer so the s is for situation t is for task a is for action and r is for results basically miriam is going to ask me a question and say let's say um how did you give me a question um <laughs> so tell me tell me about a time you had to um use a new technology that you had never been exposed to have you had that experience awesome i would say thank you for asking that question um i would love to share a story about a time when i used um, I'm blanking. <laughs> Petrometer. <laughs> I would love to tell you a time when I use Salesforce Analytics, something like that. And then I, I will tell you, oh, the problem I was trying to solve is, um, <laughs> it's so distracting. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem I was trying to solve is to figure out how our clients could do X, Y, Z, um, or like could reach more customers and understand like, for example, the customer journey. Mm -hmm. So I would say the problem is over the last five years, they've been losing customer share like 1% every year. And this is affecting bottom line productivity. So my task was how do we bring back productivity to normal levels? And I would say, okay, the first thing I had to do was take, mm -hmm. you know, understand the current state um, ask, interview people and ask them about what their ideal future state would be, what the actual goals um, was. So understand my whatever task that I was trying to do from more than like a tactical thing that you're doing, but a bigger picture aspect, like what are they really driving towards? Mm -hmm. And then 
examine the landscape of the problem. Okay, so what tools are available to me? So I examined Google Analytics, Salesforce Analytics, this and that, and I chose Salesforce Analytics because it aligned perfectly for XYZ reasons, blah, blah, blah. After doing all the research, I found that mm -hmm. by targeting this segment of the customers like 50 and up, our clients will be able to generate 10X the amount of profits. Yeah, and yeah. And we did that, and over the last five years, they've been growing by, I don't XYZ know, year X, Y, Z. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think, you know, you what you've actually done in there, and I'm just going to emphasize some of the things that you did that you must all pay attention to, is that she actually used a lot of numbers and metrics, right? And that's something that you need to learn how to do. You remember the one, uh, the one story per line rule? You're going to use the star approach to create those stories, right? So they say that you, you worked on a deal. I'm going to use my context, which is law. I worked on a 300, you know, million dollar um, deal. And they say, oh, you worked on some, you know, project finance, blah, blah, blah. You know, what, what's, what's been the most challenging um, one that you've done? I'll say, oh, like, um, it, um, well, yes, absolutely. I worked on a, on a, on a deal to finance a, a $300 million, you know, gas pipeline that would be linking two major communities, uh, you know, in, 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 or two major cities in, in, in Nigeria. And our goal was to ensure that all the documentation and the due diligence was done exceptionally well. Quite frankly, you know, this deal was a little bit different because the consortium of lenders, um, were um, doing business in Nigeria for the first time, and they weren't. They were not. They needed a lot of comfort to know that their investment was going to be protected. So what I did was to reach out to the partners and explain to them why um, these lenders were a little bit more hesitant, and we drafted a plan. Um, we drafted a plan to um, get them comfort letters from the Central Bank of Nigeria. We also got you know, insurance um, from both local and international insurance companies that the borrowers were willing to pay for to ensure that you know, no matter what happened, the lenders would get their, 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 their money back. We drafted guarantees, not only from the company, but also from the directors of the company to do this, this that, 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 that. And as a result of that, the, the lenders felt very confident um, to do business in Nigeria. And in fact, they've already um, started two, of, two other deals with us that were actually going to close within the coming year. So you were very specific about what you did. And you also put numbers like, now I've let you know that two more deals are coming my way, right? Mm -hmm. So please quantify, this is one of the things I, we teach in the graduate school bootcamp. In fact, if you're just applying to school, if you're still thinking about it, don't do hit and miss, right? We're gonna talk about our bootcamp at some point. You need to come, join our boost camp so that you do this thing once and you move on, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we talk about, how to quantify your experiences. So make sure that as you're doing your story for each line, you're putting quantities. Oh, I did this 2% increase. I spoke to 40 people. I reached out to 100 people. Here is exactly what I did. And I think the star approach, let's not reinvent the wheel, although we do have a specific way we teach um, how to answer some questions. But I think the star approach is pretty standard, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it prevents you from rambling on and on and on, mm -hmm. okay? So the graduate school bootcamp, in case you don't know, is like pretty much a bootcamp for people who are trying to get a master's degree, most likely, you know, and, and also on, on a scholarship as much as possible. So we do our best to teach you, right, the strategies from every, everything. This is what I'm telling you to wear the right color of cloth. <laughs> That's the kind of extra that we teach you in the boot camp that you would be able to submit an application from end to end that is cannot be ignored. When you submit your application, even you, you will know that, yes, I did, I did this. Look at the comments, look at testimonials. Please help us to screenshot this, my team. The boot camp is everything. <laughs> I did the boot camp and it's worth it. I got into Cambridge and Oxford. There you go. So we've been delivering value for years and we do a lot of these sessions as well when we're able to, you know, to also um, uh, at least give you guys a taste of what we do inside our community. So if you are not, if you haven't been thinking about it, this is the time to get prepared. We're having our first boot camp in May and we have limited slots every year. All right, PhD and masters, that's who the boot camp is for. All right, so let's move on. Um, exactly. So we've already pretty much done this. Yes. Right. So you can see the numbers, right? Very, very important. You said the situation, you're marketing, you're a marketing manager, a 15% increase. 
I designed new benefits. I created a, a, a WhatsApp group. I, you know, created a, a team. I reached out to the partners. I, it's about you. Yes. Okay? That one, that point, I'm glad Miriam brought that point up. They're interviewing you. They're not interviewing the team. Yeah. So even if you worked on a team um, to solve a particular challenging problem, the laser focus is what did you do on that team? Yeah. And how did you support the team to achieve the results? That you? So you can acknowledge other people's efforts, but this interview is about you. And so make sure you're highlighting the things. No, we, 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 anywhere, please. Yeah. That's from French. We're not talking <laughs> French yet. <laughs> we, we, we. <laughs> so what did you do on the team? Ask that question a few times, and then I'm sure you'll be able to get something. But there's also a place for showing that you are a team player, depending on the question. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if the question is more geared towards a team, mm -hmm. right, you can give a little wee-wee, you know, in there. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, you're about yourself. And you, there's a waiting list for the boot camp because once the, the number is full, because we want to make sure that we give the people max that are going to take our boot camp this year maximum attention whether you're an undergrad if you're an undergrad and you take the boot camp oh my god it's, it's over it's over it's over <laughs> because you would even and if you're an undergrad there's a course we have please think can you link the undergrad course there's a course we have is completely free completely free for undergraduates and that course is a game changer to show you how to position yourself from footer to google that's how we want to do it Ooh, you understand what i, I love the sound from of uni that to uni level that's how Ooh, we, that's how we want to do it energy. so if you've not taken the undergrad course please take it if you're an undergrad and then you can sign up for the boot camp it's never too early to do the boot camp okay yeah. so let's not take too much of your time um please be please put the link in in the comments so please be very specific as possible mm -hmm. um make sure that your experiences show you in a positive light as i said don't apologize don't be sorry you know don't just don't 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 sell yourself short and if there's even something that was negative right that you kind of had to talk about make sure you always spin it into um you know um a positive a positive experience so let, let me give you a specific example about this one they say tell me a time when you made a mistake or something yeah. like that um when you made a great mistake so you're gonna say the situation the, the what you did how you made like the error whatever and then uh, when you're wrapping up the the answer you're gonna say what i learned from the situation is that maybe I need to check in with my advisor more. I need to um, seek counsel from other people that have gone before me. Like you now- And you now say, since then- Since then, it, <laughs> oh my God. Since then I have not no. successfully done X, Y, Z. Yes. Moving forward, yeah. I have implemented, I've been able to implement yeah. the lessons learned from that mistake. Yeah, and you so, give them the evidence. Yes. Yeah. So it shows that you're, you're, you know that you're not perfect, you're introspective and you're you're taking experiences and you're taking them forward with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take your questions. Um, okay, so let's just just quickly. What are the different types of questions that you can be preparing for? There's this. There's sometimes they sometimes used to ask these hypothetical questions. Mm -hmm. I know they've once asked me if you were a bird, what bird would you be? I'm like, which one is bird again? again. How many birds do we have in Nigeria? You get what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, I don't know any birds. So I think I said um, I will be a. I mean, a canary is probably. I did. So yeah. when you have some of this, when you have some of these questions, you need to be careful and you need to know the context, right? Mm -hmm. So I, the kind of job I was applying for, the kind of opportunity was actually more like a graduate-ish opportunity. Was a very collaborative role. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about ego, I said I don't think an ego would be appropriate in this context mm -hmm. because it's a very domineering, it's a very big bird. So I said I was going to be a canary, which is like a, I said why because I, I I think I have a very chirpy, a bright personality. Mm. you know canary is yellow um i you know i always have something interesting to say so i'm going to be a canary but i actually stalled for a little bit and that's okay you can when you're interviewing you can say oh hmm it's always that i will not be a bread in jesus name. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're interviewing you can actually say oh my goodness that's a very interesting question i didn't see that one coming what you're doing is you're buying time Sorry. but don't say that for every single question sometimes you can actually say um 
you know, I'm, I'm going to need a second on this one. Mm-hmm. You understand? But just say it with a smiling face. It's better than saying, um, 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 or, you know, just say, oh, wow, that's, that, that, that's, a, you say, there's another line I'm going to give you guys. You say, oh my goodness, that's the one question I was hoping you were not going to ask me, <laughs> depending on, you know, how vibey they are. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so technical questions as well, you know, about the actual, we're not going to, we're not here to tell you about your work. You should know about your work. You should know about your field. Okay. Um, don't be a vulture please i'm begging you <laughs> <laughs> so cultural related questions right mm-hmm. they can ask you what you're looking forward to you know um you know in that in, in with by winning the the commonwealth scholarship or whatever you can say that one of the things that is very key to being a commonwealth scholar you can in fact what i would say is that you know i applied for a couple of scholarships but i was very particular about the commonwealth why? Because it's not just a scholarship. It's a scholarship that connects you to a community of impact. You understand? And that's one of the reasons why I want to win this scholarship. The community or the Commonwealth Scholarship, you can use me to brag. You understand? All of you that are going for Commonwealth Scholarship, use me to brag. Like, what else are you doing? You understand? You can say Commonwealth alumni. I know Commonwealth alumni who have had significant impact on other you know, people using you know, um, the experiences from the UK. You understand? And that's exactly what I intend to do. Come on with alumni from this person. Mention a few alumni, very big, big, big people from this professor to that professor have gone on to have a positive impact on Nigeria. And I see myself being, you know, and I am one of those people in the making. You understand? I intend to do X, Y, Z, Z, Z. So you are showing them, you know, that impact thing that we talked about. You are showing them, you are showing them, you've also thought very well about you know what they are about which is that alumni community that's not something a lot of people might emphasize during the interview but you may you need to make sure you're emphasizing what they would want to hear hear what is music in their ears Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. um do you want to take the rest yeah so interpersonal skills this one is probably like the most popular questions you would get because they're trying to gauge you we've talked about fit for the organization fit for the lab fit for we're looking for fits, right? So interpersonal skills, they want to know how you will exist within a team structure. Yeah. So um, be definitely be ready for questions like, have you ever worked in a dysfunctional team? How have you um, collaborated with other people? How have you um, fostered like team spirit, team spirit and stuff yeah. like that? How did you ensure that um, set, that set tasks were achieved? Things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, assessing your potential. They will always ask you, what are your career goals? They might even do <laughs> ex- be extra and say, if plan A doesn't work, what is your plan B? Mm-hmm. Not all the time, but that's a question that they can ask you. So be ready to talk to your career goals, why you're interested in your career goals, what's motivating you, and the impact that you hope to have with those goals. Yeah, and how that program, how that scholarship will be the platform to help you achieve those exactly. goals. We're almost done, people. Um, so what questions can you, um, um, oh, questions about your values in school. So other questions would be like, you know, what do you, what are you most looking forward to, um, you know, by coming to this school? Mm-hmm why this particular school why this particular program we're not going to go into that in much detail we've talked about how you should do you know your research right Right. make sure you're talking about oh you have this lab you have this organization you have this conference every year you have this professor and so on and so forth oh one tip i wanted to mention that i forgot is when you're doing your research look at the 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 and okay i will actually mention it more with the funding part look at the 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 twitter or the newsletter or whatever of the school and the faculty and look at the people who have recently gotten grants and awards if you're looking for money right and see if your research is tailored can be tailored to theirs um because that means they have money to spend on students yep. um so we've already talked about telling about yourself so how do you handle questions you don't have an answer for what do you do tell us your tips if you have a question if you have asked a question that you don't really know how to answer how do you approach it um love me how do you think we should approach those i think a couple of ways. Number one is sort of deflection, yeah. which, which is, uh, that's a very interesting topic or interesting problem. I've actually never experienced it, but if I were to experience it, yeah, I would do X, Y, Z. Yeah. Or um, I haven't experienced it. However, this is something similar that I've experienced. That I've experienced. Yeah. So 
this one is a tricky one. And I think this is a place where you can actually pause and say, um, you know, this is very interesting. Um, never, you know, you can, you can buy time here yeah. um, to kind of think about, okay, because when they ask you a question, it's not just about the surface level of the question. What is the real question that they're asking you? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, why this school? It's not for you to be reciting for them all the things they know about the school because this is the, you can know their school better than them. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the question there is, why are you interested in coming to this school, mm -hmm. right? The same logic applies here. So if you're able to buy some time to think about, okay, they're asking mean? me, okay, have I ever faced an ethical dilemma? What they really want to know is, am I a well-grounded person? Yeah, trustworthy. Am I, tr yeah, am I trustworthy? Am I gonna do the right thing in the face of difficult situations? So if you have a story that is more like less, ethical more of a difficult problem that you've been able to mm. handle then you can bring that question that answer in mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and you know you you can just say as, as uh, uh Ola has said um this is something similar that i've experienced right say so, oh well i haven't really you know in fact another thing you always need to do is to sell yourself and your circumstance so if they say something like have you ever had an ethical face an ethical di dilemma i would say something like you know i've been really fortunate in my career to work with companies that uphold the highest level of ethics i've sold myself again before <laughs> i will say no before you ask the question i've already i've still sold myself like you know I, I, so, so you understand the kind of places that may have worked you know like oh i've never i've never been there because i've been very fortunate to work with companies that have the highest moral um you know um um ethics however you know if i were to face such a situation here is what i would do right okay. i like this comment i've never prepared a car before but i'm a master chef in moi moi what you're going to say is have you, ever, have you ever tried moi moi exactly the nutritional components <laughs> can you cook you would just sell the moi yeah. moi you'd be like actually i'm the best at making moi moi and you know here are the similarities but here is how yes. moi moi is superior to akara yeah so i can do even better than what you're asking me so just i know sometimes there's that initial shock when you haven't consider the question before but just try and buy yourself some time to calm down you know just give yourself like a few seconds like oh this is if this is a very interesting question i'm gonna have to think on that one for a second i'm like well you know the most similar thing i can i can think about is and just be very conversational about it we've already talked about your you know um spinning a negative situation to a positive situation and that kind of is similar in terms of weaknesses mm -hmm. as well yeah. right your weakness should not be a weakness you should say how you've worked on it and how you've kind of gotten positive results after that mm -hmm. okay amazing okay good stuff do you want to speak to this yes so composure during an interview like we mentioned earlier looking at the camera yeah gives the illusion that you're looking at the person so hide yourself from the view um, if it's in person, you want to sit upright um, and you want to have like an open um, demeanor. Yeah. So like I'm listening to you, I'm nodding, I am, you know, I'm not cross, I'm mimicking. And then you want to mirror the person that you're talking with. Mm -hmm. So if they're like this, you kind of want to do that too. And then, you know, smile, please. Ah, I've interviewed people that just smile and it wasn't pleasant. Yeah. Even if it's on the phone, they cannot see you. Yeah. They can hear the smile in your voice. If you have to fake it, you have to, and a smile makes you feel better too. So please, smile is for free. Mm -hmm. Use it mm -hmm. to your advantage. Speak clearly. Um, it's easier for you to want to talk like fast. Sometimes it's okay to like, yes, I would like to answer this question. Take your, you know, because the, the reality of the matter is you're going to have an accent to the person that you're talking to. Yeah. So it's on you to make sure that they understand what you're trying to say clearly. And one of the ways that you can incorporate that is by speaking a little bit more slowly and intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, this comment here about people remember how you make them feel. If you're on video and they have a nice background, please compliment them. Compliment them. Yeah. Compliment them, compliment their work, compliment their, like whatever you can, make them feel good. I actually remember something I wanted to say about before the interview. I don't know if you have tried it before, but before your interview, you need to look in front of a mirror and gas yourself up. Hey. All right? <laughs> you look in front of a mirror in your suit and your whatever and be like, I'm the best. If there's only one person that they're going to pick for this opportunity, it's going to be me. Mm -hmm. You understand? I'm prepared. I'm ready. The interviewers 
are going to love me. They're going to do what I want. You know, you speak to yourself and be very positive, right? Before you actually go into the interview. Personally, this might be an overshare. I may or might kill me for this. I have a set of confidence underwear. From the underwear, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh my, it's true. I'm actually serious. So I'm feeling good from the inside. I play my top alabi. Yes. I play all of the songs that make me happy. Like you have to be in in a mental space to be ready to, to show it. up yes. in your best self with you know in your most positive light yeah absolutely we've kind of talked about some of the other things as well yeah. um so now let's talk about questions that you can ask um your interviewer um number one i think it's a crime to say you don't have any question i think the best kind of questions actually are the questions that come up from your interview yeah so have some questions already prepared but as things are going by you, as you're we discussing, also try and see if there's some questions that you can ask based on how the conversation has gone, right? Now, you know, we talked about setting up Google Alerts, things like that. That's a good opportunity to ask a question. I saw that there was a recently announced so -so, so and so funding for the lab. Is this for so -so, so and so project or is there something else that's coming, right? You sound very informed. Sometimes your questions are a way to even show that you know stuff mm -hmm. and then you ask them for further information, right? So don't ask them questions that are on the website. Don't ask them questions that are obvious. You can also ask them personal questions, but you have to be very careful about this. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, so what I would do is, here's my approach. I would ask a technical question and then I would ask a personal question. Mm -hmm. So technical question could be more like, you know, when you started, so let's say I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing for, I don't know, I don't know I'm using intellectual property, but like I'm doing, <laughs> uh, uh, or a human rights, um, you know, human rights um, law program, right? I could ask as a question and say, oh, what, um, like I, I've noticed that the, um, the, the center is typically uh, involved in, um, you know, any areas that, uh, where there's like a, war like war related um, issues are there any plans to get involved in the russia and ukraine um you know war is there any plan in the center you know to to produce some research on that and you know what are the timelines perhaps it's something that i can you know support with if i join if, if i get this opportunity they can talk about that and then you can now say and you know i'm just going to ask this question i hope it's okay it's more of a personal question and you're smiling and you're like you know why did you choose human rights mm -hmm. right i'm sure mm -hmm. you could have done anything like well for you i know why I chose human rights. I mean, I kind of, you, you already explained your story and they should already know that right now. But you can say, why did you choose human rights? What's your story for choosing human rights? And then they go on and then something, something happened. But I wouldn't go with just that personal question first. I remember when I was doing an interview and I'd seen on the website that the woman is into airplanes and aviation and things like that. And then I was like, oh, that I just had to talk about this. I had to ask this question because my husband is actually into aviation. Um, um, so I, I, I hear a lot about airplanes at home. You know, is there a, what what is what was your you know motivation for incorporating aviation into your legal practice? Oh, and she just went on no 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 about how she flies planes and because she flies planes, you know, blah 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 blah. And we had such a lovely conversation. So um, I would say that your personal your questions technical if the vibes allow one personal, but not personal like oh how is your family doing? Not that kind no, of no, question. No, no. All right. Okay. Um, right. So after the interview, this is this one is key. Yeah. yeah. This can set you apart from many, many interviews. Sometimes they'll have like is I don't know. camera off. No, it's on. Okay. All right. Um, they can set you. You know, you can have like they can have like ten interviews a day, but not everyone is going to send them a thank you email. Yeah. Thank you email must be done within forty eight hours. Yeah. Preferably 24. Yes. Except it's like a weekend and you're like, okay, let me respect your weekend. Um, mm -hmm. But it should be done within 24 to 48 hours. And what should be in that email? What should be in the email is the point that, okay, so thank you for your time. Really enjoyed talking to you. Um, I found something, something X, Y, Z. Something specific but, that they will used to remember. You. Yes. Yeah. Something that you talked about during the interview. Yeah. I found it interesting that, um, you've stayed at, you know, this institution for, um, for X number of years because X, Y, Z, and that's something that I'm really looking forward to doing, um, blah, blah, blah. Like something specific to that interview that you found interesting, it doesn't, and it should be short and sweet. This is not the time to be like overselling yourself again. Yeah. This is really genuinely to say, thank you for your time. I found this interesting and I look forward to hearing from you. 
And can I say something? That because you don't get an opportunity that you interview for does not mean that's the end of that opportunity mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't get that job, you or that um, position or that scholarship, you have met some people. You could make those connections. Those connections could become something later on. You understand what I'm saying? So even if you don't get it, right, just know that I'm still interested in building this relationship and I don't know where it might become useful for me. Okay, it just confirm to us that you can still see us because we've hidden our self view and we don't think to seem to know how to put it back on. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so now let's talk about funding, right? How to ask for more money. So typically a funding conversation may not necessarily come up in your interview conversation. Like now we're talking about, this is a school. Obviously if it's like a Commonwealth scholarship, you're there for funding, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the entire interview. That's that's what it's about. But if you're interviewing for a position in a school, then the funding conversation may not necessarily come up there. Like, oh, um, you know, uh, what kind of scholarship they might offer you or whatever. But I would say still be prepared just in case it comes up right yeah. but typically funding is a different conversation and it's more like a negotiation in a way so what i always tell our students is whenever you are given a scholarship if you're given a scholarship of thirty thousand dollars and your school fees is fifty thousand dollars you should send, thank them for the offer blah blah, blah 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 and then you should tell them you know you appreciate this and and all of that and tell them that is there somebody that you'd like to speak about the offer a little bit more mm -hmm. you know is there someone that you know who would be the most appropriate person to speak to would it be them or would it be a financial advisor with the school that you'd like to set up a call now what you're going to do when you're going for that call is not just to say i beg give me more money no <laughs> it's about you know chatting with them saying how you're so excited to come to the school how you know the money was was really great you know for you you're very happy about that and then you now have to sell yourself in terms of the value that you bring right mm -hmm. so I, i'm really interested in coming to cornell because xyz and z you know actually it's quite a huge community of um of, of of people that are in my network who have come to cornell and i could see the difference in um you know when they started the, the, the mba and post mba and i and 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 i you know assessing their abilities and mine i'm very confident that i'll be able to bring similar you know blah 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 blah, blah to the program and this is this these are the particular areas that i'm that i have experience in i have experience in marketing you know i've actually led some of the top um um and most memorable marketing campaigns in you know Africa and so on and so forth and you know I really do have a, a lot of insights to to give to x y and z and then you can say however it seems like you know even though I appreciate the scholarship um so it says what if it's organized by a panel of faculty members a panel whether it's a panel or not i think it's the, still the same approach whether it's one person yeah. or whether it's a panel it's the same approach. i don't know if they're asking in regards to thank you email or if they're asking uh, i see yeah if you can send it so an email to everyone on the yeah. panel why not yeah. everything i think is applicable so you you then go on and say you know that you know even though you're really excited about this opportunity it seems like the funding may be a bit of a challenge just say ah ah if you don't give me this money i cannot come don't say it like that you know the funding might be a little bit of a challenge like while you have been saving you know and trying your best to come up with the money you know quite frankly the exchange rate and the earning power for nigeria compared to dollars it just doesn't it just doesn't add up it's quite difficult to save that amount um and also you know based on your story you literally had to bring yourself up you're the first of your family to go to university and you know you your story and my story has always been one of resilience so even though i don't have the extra twenty thousand dollars for the fees right now that's why i'm having this conversation because i believe that there's a way we can work things out and then you can say and ask them are there what are the are there any further opportunities to increase the funding amount um you know available and they will say oh there's this scholarship there's this scholarship you can apply for blah 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 blah, blah. then when they say that you can then say you need to have done your research, as I said, set your people in the faculty who recently got some funding. And you can let them know, you can say, oh, I noticed that Professor X, Y, and Z recently got some funding for a particular project. Do you think there will be opportunities to collaborate with them in form of like a research assistant or teaching assistant position to be able to earn some additional income while I'm in school? Do you think that's something we can talk about? They'll be so impressed with the fact that you know who has money. And the other part is you're solutioning for them. Exactly. You, you, you want to make their job easier. So come with ideas or oh, are, are there TA ships that I can 
teaching assistant, yeah. graduate research assistantships that I can do? Is there any other way that I can support the faculty yeah. or the faculties, um, faculty members? Yeah. Um, to get a little bit more funding because sometimes your funding can come from one professor or yeah, from two professors yeah. or from the department and the professor. Mm -hmm. So you want to ask the question um, about, you know, what other avenues are you not thinking about? What other things can you, and it might be helpful to have a conversation with the student prior to, to, yes. to the administrator. So asking them, okay, what, what exists um, for you? Yeah. Because that could, they could give you some insight yeah on what's possible as part of your research absolutely and and that's what goes to the next point about how can you provide something in exchange for the extra funding right mm -hmm. so i'm i'm happy to do um i'm happy to do um curriculum revisions yes. for different faculty members mm -hmm. um you know help teach a class research. i'm about yes um marketing you can you whatever it is that you yeah. can do come with ideas they might not even say yes but they they know that you're thinking that you're entrepreneurial that you're yeah. taking initiative and you can also let them see how much of uh, value that you, you you bring in that you can say something like um i don't mean to you know sometimes i don't mean to brag but there's really never been anybody who bet on me that didn't um, mm. see the results. I would love for Cornell to be the school that bets on me. And that, you know, I know I'm asking for a, a lot more than has been offered, but I can assure you that in the next three to five years or even shorter, Cornell would have reaped the reward of, you know, having me as part of their alumni, not only in the way I'm going to engage and, you know, um, promote the program, but also, you know, being able to give back, blah, 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 when yeah. so, 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 so. And we're going to have a book that actually deals exclusively on funding, an ebook, and it's going to be coming out very soon. So please, please, when it's out, make sure you share with everyone, all right? It's going to be coming out soon on, 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 on funding. Also, internal and external scholarships. You need to ask them when you're having that conversation whether they're external scholarships that they know that other students have been able to yep. get, yep. right? So there's the internal ones, but just ask them that, you know, I'm sure you've had some other students in this situation before and who can finally were able to attend the program. Can you share, you know, are there any other external means, maybe from the general graduate program or, you know, from any philanthropist that you think I should be able to take a look at at this time? Mm -hmm. And that might also be a, a way for you to increase the amount of money that you get. All right. So we have finally, oh no, come to the end. We're going to take your question. Questions. Yes. So start, if you've written a question before that we didn't address, I'm sorry we didn't ignore you. It's just hard to do both at the same time. So send your questions. You can just copy your question before and paste it again. And we'll take them really quickly. As I said, we have our graduate school um, application bootcamp and we have a waiting list. First come, first serve. This bootcamp is what we have used to get people into the top schools in the world. And you know what the funny thing about the bootcamp is the gift that keeps giving. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you do the boot camp you get into school but when you get into school they see that you're excellent why it's because you did the boot camp mm -hmm. and you learned how to sell yourself you learned how to uh, you know package yourself you learned the common mistakes and pitfalls that other people are making that you should not be making you are doing things within one blow using one stone to kill multiple birds at the same time the boot camp as i say gets in the social enterprise the value for our boot camp is way less than the 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 nominal amount that we charge because we want we just want you to be committed yeah. if we give you the boot camp like this in a free class you will not implement it but if you pay you will implement what mm -hmm. you learned yeah. so i hope you are going to be ready to to invest in yourself the first one is going to be may click the link join the waiting list right and it's we also have an accountability group so if you, you don't want to even help yourself there's somebody <laughs> who will be pushing you to also help you and i really hope to see you guys you know this can be your year this can be your year, but only if you move, okay? So now let me see what the questions are. Somebody said, if the interview kicks you out, if the internet kicks you out, how do you bounce back from that? Um, hmm, that's, a, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Number one, try for your internet not to kick you out. Use the most reliable one. But I think if you know that there's a possibility that your internet might be off, I think you should proactively say it. Yes. 
and say, oh, hi, da, da, da. oh, just before we go in, my I, 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 I promise I did the best with the internet today, but sometimes it gets a little, it, it fluctuates a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna, if it, if it goes up, just rest assured that I'm, I'm trying to join uh, again. And if I'm having any challenges, I'll shoot you a quick email at blah, 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 to let you know what I'm facing. But hopefully we shouldn't have any problems. That's what I would do, yep. right? And if you're able to show, or ask them for a phone number in case, you know, the internet cuts off, something like that. So I would be more proactive about that. Than yes. Reactive. If it's a possibility, then you need to let them know from yeah. the beginning and confirm the email address that you have or the number and yeah. say, are this alternative, are this good ways to get in contact with yeah. you? It shouldn't yes. happen. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so for a question about why this school, is it okay to talk about the personal reason for wanting the school, e.g. having a spouse in that location, I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that could be small talk later. I, I think that could be point number four yeah let's say we typically say have three good reasons for doing something like mm-hmm. when you're answering so the reason why i said this could be a good point is sometimes when they when they will give you a chance because they know that you're going to excel in not just academics but in the immediate environment mm-hmm. so a spouse is actually a benefit yeah because they know that okay you have some kind of support structure in place mm-hmm. But it cannot be your, it's first, not your first reason no. at all. It cannot it's be your small, second reason either. It's a small <laughs> talk thing. It's, it's almost kind of like saying, oh, I, you know, oh, I'm, 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 I want to study at NYU because I mean, like everybody knows New York is about blah, 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 blah. But that's not your first reason for wanting to go to NYU because it's in New York. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like it can be an additional point, but mm-hmm. it's not your number one point. Like I would just put it in like later, 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 if at all. Okay, Galaxy A10. I wish you said your name. Has an interview with SX on Tuesday. Woo! Social work. All the best. You've got this with all these tips. Oh, come on, forget it. Um, what are the other questions? Is it okay to address a mutual education background one of your interviewers if they are not the only one on the interview panel? You might want to be a little bit careful with that if it's a one-on-one interview i would say definitely go for it right but if they're not the only ones um on the panel i would be a little hesitant to single them out you know because if that person wants to even speak for you they might feel that the person is already biased yeah right so you can mention you can mention, you can acknowledge, you can say, oh, I started, I started at University of Baden. I think some people on the panel maybe have as did as well. You can say that, but not like, oh, I know Mr. Labaja did, you know, no, yeah. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Okay. Chidema says, what's the role of a supervisor in the admissions process? Can a supervisor reject a student recommended for admissions by the admission committee? Yes. Mm-hmm. Depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. Um, but they wouldn't typically admit you they won't typically admit you, except you are definitely kind of going to get a supervisor. You may just not get your preferred one. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on the, the structure of the school. So there's some people that they will admit a, a cohort of people and say, okay, you guys are going to rotate with different supervisors. In that case, the supervisor has less authority mm-hmm. not authority but less input in the who is going to get accepted right um but in the situation where the supervisor is the one that's going to fund you they have all of the legway the all of the room so they must accept you yeah and that means you're you're going to be interviewing with them with before them. you get your formal letter of acceptance exactly so you guys please adapt these tips to your specific circumstance for some of you your interview will come in court or your chat this can be kind of like a chat with Mm -hmm. the supervisor would come before you get an offer for some of you you are interviewing um to to you've been told that you're going to the next stage and then you're interviewing to get the offer for some of you you are interviewing to for funding so it depends on what your specific context is okay can I thank you, Nota, for an interview being misinterpreted as lobbying for the position of scholarship? I personally don't think so. I think so far you keep it straight. Don't say, oh, please consider me for the scholarship. Mm-hmm. Don't say that in the email. Just mm-hmm. literally thank you. That's all. And a lot of them may not respond so that they don't want to be biased. So don't be surprised if, you know, they don't respond. They don't respond. Yeah. When discussing my potential impact, does it have to be applied back home in Nigeria? Can my goal be established in the foreign country? I personally am more keen to say that I'm going back home. 
Mm-hmm. Even with me, even though I'm still in Canada, a lot of the impact that I have is actually in Nigeria. And I think a lot of times when development bodies are funding you, they don't want you to go and develop the UK. They want you to go and develop Nigeria yeah. or Ghana. Yeah. So um, I would say that you should try and read the room. But I would personally, if it's a funding body that is saying you need to go back home after, mm-hmm. why is your impact in the UK? It has yeah. to be back in Nigeria. On telling your story with the star technique, how much detail should you go into when narrating the story? Is it okay to give all of the information or hold some details back? You, okay, this is a very this is an excellent question because yeah. I don't think we touched on timing. Yeah, we did. For each interview question, best practice is one 90 seconds to two minutes for the whole answer. Yeah. So we talked about maybe uh, we talked about definitely preparing before your interview. So let's say, for example, you've said, I want to practice this question. Um, how did I collaborate with other people? For example, mm-hmm. you're going to draft out that story and you're going to recite it. How long does it take you to recite it? You, you need to know if it's five minutes that you need to chop out a lot of details. You want to get to the key things that you yeah. did, the key problem. To avoid, the star is there for you to be able to structure your thoughts. So you don't want to be rambling on for a long time. 90 seconds to two minutes is the appropriate length of time for one answer. Yeah. So someone says, is it compulsory for me to write SAT to get a full scholarship in a good school in the US? Are you talking about undergrad? Um, That's a completely different conversation from today. So we will not be addressing that question. Um, If you need support with um, getting admission, undergraduate admission, send an email to info at getting.com.ng or go to the Instagram page or our website and fill the form. And one of our consultants will definitely reach out to you. We we do assist with um, undergraduate and graduate admissions uh, to different countries. So, Jelena says, I enrolled in writing within essays. Fantastic. And I'm applying to Nottingham for entrepreneurship, innovation, and management this fall. I need 100% developing solution master scholarship. Do you think I should still attend the boot camp? Absolutely. I think you should attend the boot camp. Um, there's an element of the writing within essays in the boot camp, but that's not all there is. There's a lot more. So I think you should attend the boot camp. How much is the boot camp? And could those of us in Nigeria join online? Of course. It's, um, it's, the boot camp is completely online um, and you can join. It's going to be just, it's a, just a hundred dollars um and so people from anywhere in the world can actually join um would you advise no discount to it's already at the discounted price but let's see maybe we'll consider that but there, maybe there will be an early bird for me but that would be the only time there'll be an early bird um will you advise a four-year student studying a five-year course to write at ielts now okay this is not related to that question you need to know that ielts will expire i think after two years mm-hmm. so if you know that you are ready to apply soon then please go ahead um, what's the minimum score to get a full rest scholarship? That's still in the SAT question. In my PhD application, my essay was centered on drug recovery. I narrowed down to cancer. I uh, submitted so my application. I found a really receptive professor who is working on COVID and she is looking forward to interacting with me if I get called for an interview. Of course, how can I take care of this? My core passion is discovering new therapies. Discrepancy in disease is my issue now. You have to just apply. You say that, you know, when you were interested in cancer, but however, when COVID came up, you get what I'm trying mm-hmm, to say, mm-hmm. you've been able to see ways in which your, you know, your interest in that cancer research can be applied to COVID-19. And this is the challenge that is facing the world right now, blah, 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 blah. And you would like to get in on it. I don't think it's a problem at all, no. right? It's, it, as a researcher, you, you don't have one single research for all your life. No. Your research interest evolves, mm-hmm. all right? So someone says, I need an expert to look at my SOP based on what I learned in the winning essays. You are the expert already after you've done the right of winning essays. Trust me, that course is loaded. You are, you have become the expert, Jalila. You need to believe in yourself. On telling your story, what if you didn't have an interesting background? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> Haven't done so much since graduation and you had a career gap for reasons. What if, even that career gap, gap? What are the reasons? What was the reason? That itself might be something to talk about. If you took time up to, to start a family, that's not a bad thing. That's something great to talk about. Okay. I don't think there's anybody who doesn't have a story. It's just a lot of times you think it's not a story. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to take the next few questions? Yeah. I'm currently working now, but I want to go back to school for my master's. Can I start preparing from now? Of course. Schools, supervisor, look. Yes. The earlier, the better. It will make your job easier in the future. Keep it, keep it Excel spreadsheet yeah. or a Google Doc so you know what you're <laughs> what you've been researching. Mm-hmm. And that's why we we have the first bootcamp cohort in May. 
A lot of people start talking about admissions, whatever, in September. It's too late. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? We will run a, 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 a session towards the end of the year for those who did not start early. But for those who are going to get the most value, May is a good time. When I was preparing for my PhD, I wrote my proposal for three months. Mm-hmm. Three months yep. before I was able to, to have something to say. I mean, our very first call yeah. when I was preparing for grad school was in May. Yeah. And we and you didn't submit until later in the year. Yeah, and by that time I'd already did my GRE. I wrote my GRE. Oh no, I'm lying. I wrote my GRE in June. Yeah, that means I've been preparing for the GRE like at least three months in advance. So, yeah, and so yeah, it, it's a year long process. I don't. It hurts me when I see people studying for before no you need yeah. to be thinking ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I'm glad you're here because mm-hmm. it means you're already thinking. So hi, Linda. When asked why you want to study in the UK, what's the best answer to give? There are different reasons. I think you should actually focus more on the institution. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, why that institution in the UK? Talk about the professors, you know, talk about the research area, and just talk about the fact that UK has a very rich culture and history, and it's such a, such, a, such, a, such a close connection between Nigeria and the UK, and that's just something you want to explore from that perspective. That's yeah. all. Um, go on. I have an interview for a dual degree in international economic law at the University of Toulouse <laughs> in collaboration with the University of State in Florida. Do you have any specific advice as regards to? Yeah, I think the <laughs> advice is be specific. <laughs> be specific so the only thing i can and be specific in everything that you do and ask the only advice i can give you now is that it's based on what you said which is that you have two it's a collaborative program Mm -hmm. so you need to know why do you want that collaborative program and what the benefits of that collaborative program but you know this this is the challenge you know when you're asking questions even when you are reaching out to people students who are already in that cohort or in that school don't just ask them general questions I'm, i have an interview with cornell you know thursday how can how, if, can, I how can i prep don't ask that i'm not going to respond to that email. i won't respond either I can, how can i prep i'm not going to respond to that so um well so, you can say something like i saw that you're part of this organization how did that organization while you were there impact your time at cornell that I would be excited to tell you about. Yeah. And then you can ask me more questions after. But if you just say, how should I prep? I don't know. Okay, I'll take this one. This question says, do, do, should, you, should you get a master's before you go to law school? I personally would say go to law school first. And then, you know, and I would even say do your NYSC if you're in Nigeria, which is like a one-year, um, you know, uh, pro- program with the government, service with the government, and then go for your master's after. Um what key point can one say in a video motivation mm-hmm. letter that is limited to one minute? It depends on the question, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a prospective law student. Hope you come <laughs> to Canada soon. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I'll take that jello fries. Yes, yes sir. Please. Someone said, Auntie Mira. My name is Miriam, please. I'll be finishing <laughs> school this year. Don't age me. Although I have a compulsory NYSC. Uh, internship, but I would love to further more. Can you advise an undergraduate? Absolutely. If you're an undergrad, please join the mm-hmm. bootcamp. Better for you. Um, when the scholarship body did not directly state that you need to go back to your country, but they asked you in the interview whether you would go back to your country to make an impact. It is dicey to state that you is, is it dicey to state that you will be staying in the UK? Yes. I'm aware that Miriam did not have to come back to Nigeria to make an impact on Nigerians who want to come to the UK to study. Who told you? I came back home. I was home for a few years before I finally started my PhD because my scholarship demanded it. Mm-hmm. Um, the developing solutions master in Nottingham comes up in April. Registering in May may be late. What do you think? For the boot camp, is that an interview? If it's an interview, this is all you need. For the boot camp, it's starting from afresh, from the beginning. So if you've already submitted your application, the boot camp is not for you. This is what you need. Um, I have two admissions, but none with funding. What would you advise since I have to pay for the first semester within a month after starting the degree and tuition is high? I'm not sure I understand. I don't really think I understand. Um, so just in the interest of time, I'm just going to be taking the questions that are relevant to what we've discussed today. Is there any link or websites one can explore for available for PhD funding in the UK? Watch out, follow us on social media at Getting Edu, Getting E-D-U uh, on LinkedIn and uh, on, link, on, on Instagram, on Twitter and Getting Education Consulting on LinkedIn. Um, we have a lot coming up in the next few months. Jalila has an offer from U- UPenn. Uh, with 5k scholarship what do you think ask them for more money based on what we have 
we have That's discussed. Cool. If you know that you cannot meet up to the amount and you may need to re-strategize. Um, wow, there are a lot of messages. I have uh, admission for MPH in Emory, no scholarship, school sending for external scholarship. Can I reach out to professor, so professors for ARI or TA? The admissions department did not did reach out again. I said to them, so if one of the internal scholarship I've submitted, the problem is even if I get that one, it's not enough to cover my tuition. And that's why you need to join the bootcamp. You do our bootcamp. I always say that you need to follow the money first. When you apply to Emory, you, you need to have seen how the money for Emory was going to materialize before yeah. you apply there. Otherwise, you might have saved your application fee for somewhere else, right? There's some so, schools and some programs that will not give you a lot of funding. That's just the the, the truth of the matter. Yeah. Um, Temi says, requesting for more funding is uh, is it advisable to wait until one year from other schools in case scholarships are given it depends on your timing if the other if you're going to hear from another school very quickly maybe you can wait another thing you can do is to reach out to the other school you're waiting for a decision on and say oh hi you know i'm wondering if i can get an early decision because i have some other deadlines that i need to meet yeah um is it appropriate to mention during a master's scholarship interview that i'm currently studying for a master's in nigeria i personally wouldn't mention no. it um yeah, it's okay to join the boot camp. The earlier, the better. Um, I have an interview for Oxford next week. I'll be interviewed by the director of admissions uh, as senior admissions officer. Can I ask program specific questions? Um, I think they would have a sense of the program, but you shouldn't probably wouldn't be able to ask the technical questions. Like, you know, if you're a science person, maybe about technical stuff in the lab, they may not be able to answer that uh, question for you. One thing that we should have touched on is when thinking about questions to ask, make sure they're questions you actually want to know the answer to, mm -hmm. not because you think it will make you look smart. Like, I just needed to make that point yeah. because sometimes you just ask questions because you think it will make you look better. Mm -hmm. That's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I agree. Um, Besson says, um, do we run a service writing statement of purpose? Unfortunately, we don't um, because let me not lie to you, it's going to be crazy expensive <laughs> if you want us to do that. And our goal is to remain affordable. So the boot camp is where we teach you how to be the person. A lot of my, my our students now go on. I see them on Twitter advising people. It makes me so happy because they've learned exactly mm -hmm. what they need to do, right? So the boot camp is what you join. You need to be able to do the work yourself because once you you can have a solid foundation it will not help you when you get into school so someone at uh, tuji says apply to six schools four rejections two in review please join the boot camp so that you can do things the right yeah. way you don't need to be going through all this um does getting have any service that focuses on interview i have a scholarship interview by the end of the month but i feel like i'm not ready we can consider it um we don't do it, but we can consider it if you want, you know, someone to coach you for an interview. We'll think about it. Um, UPenn suggests an organization that gives those empower loans. Do you think it's okay to go for that? I think you're the only one who can answer that question, uh, depending on your um, receptivity to loans. Mm -hmm. um, Risk for loans. Yeah. Um, See, they're telling you to do the boot camp. Uh, someone says, I have a tuition and accommodation discount at U Lincoln, but I'm here to get feedback from Queen Mary. Do you advise I follow the money and also try to get more funding? Hey, me, I believe it follows money. the money. Oh. Hmm. Dinero. You can always achieve whatever else you want to achieve through other ways, but how do you, if you don't get access to that educational institution, how do you even start? Yeah. Um, so I interviewed for PhD psychology at the US school a few weeks ago, got in and fully funded. My tips. So everyone prepared for an interview, you search about the school, the interview, and be confident. Learning never stops. I've learned so much today. Fantastic. If you follow our congratulations. Congrats. And we have come. That's a good way to end. That's a very fantastic <laughs> way. Um, so these are some other questions that we, we, we got, which I think we've kind of answered. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'm so glad that you're here. Remember, the bootcamp opens in a couple of weeks. Please join the waiting list. Um, if you enjoy this session, give us a shout out on twitter on instagram we're at getting edu come on like that's that's this was we've spent our time over two, two hours, hours. <laughs> you know we spent our time pouring out to you guys we prepared slides we wore makeup we did everything so we took um, showers, we took showers, <laughs> showers <laughs> to come and share with you so i want you to i want my phone to start Bring in. I want to hear those notifications at getting edu. That's our, 
uh, LinkedIn and Instagram. Just share that you had a fantastic time. Let other people in your network know about us. You know, maybe we don't do the best job of making noise um, about what we do. And I think we're going to work on that because we do such good work. But I need you to be our evangelist. You know, people, your friends will believe you than believe us, mm -hmm. right? Tell them that this was amazing. The bootcamp is $100 or 50,000 Naira only. And that's an investment that you need to, 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 to a small little drop investment to get hundreds of tens of thousands of dollars in scholarships. I believe you guys, um, you know that you're worth that investment. So I'm really glad this session was helpful for you. Join our community, follow us on social media. I want to see those shout outs. I'm, I'm actually, you know, the funny thing is, yeah. people don't know how much we keep an eye on our social media. Like, so people come to us and start asking us for things, but you're not engaging with us. You're not yeah. sharing us. You're not, you don't care about us and you want us to care about you. No, it has to be a two-way <laughs> two street, okay? Yes, I know I'm blackmailing you, but- No, that's not blackmail, that's real talk. Oh, someone said that if you pay 25% for four people who participated today to boot the boot camp, it is a hit, guys. Can you see? Chidima, my team, please let me reach out to Chidima. Chidima, I think you should pick the people that you want. Yes. Right? In your network. Let them know and let them come. Right? People that you know and trust that will use it. See, for me, for us, we don't want people to join our boot camp who are not ready to work. Mm. You understand? So please, 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 if you know that this year you want it to be your year, I always say that studying abroad changed my life. Yep. I'm living the life of my dreams. Yes, I'm proud to say it. I'm living the life of my dreams because I was able to study abroad. I've hustled, though. I've cried, though. I've been, <laughs> it's I've, not easy, you I've, know. Been, I've been through. But I can tell you that I am living the life of my dreams because I put in the work. Now it's time for me to, you know, sit to, back, to relax. You know what? Let's stop this recording because I'm about to sing another song. <laughs> <laughs> stop recording, please. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Chidima, I got into Oxford and Cambridge, did our boot camp, mm. from what I understand. Mm -hmm. So Chidima is an, an alumni. So you, it's not, it's not beans, right? Let's stop the recording. So let's get Chidima's um, details so that we can also share her story, you know, um, sometime soon. Can we stop?